Hello and welcome back to the channel. So, finally, the long-awaited film where I convert a Peugeot Boxer L3H2 builder's van, pictures of the van here, into a luxurious, self-sufficient, off-grid camper van suitable for my and my family's needs. And this is the journey, this is the process. So, bit of a long film, but get some popcorn, snacks, whatever you want. Sit tight and enjoy this film of how someone with relatively no experience in this field managed to create something fantastic. Follow the film and its journey all the way through with a cover from going to pick up the van, the journey in creating the van, to the overall costing of the van and the time that this has taken me. Bearing in mind that I work full time um, in a management job role, I have a family and I also train and race in terms of cycling so I need time to continue to train okay so enjoy let's it's gonna be off. over a hundred miles so uh not done a hundred miles in one go for a while because of the back injury just climbing just now so we'll catch up shortly next uh stop not stop but next fueling I think we'll probably be round about Johnson Bridge or Lockerbie and then on to Ecclefechan, Gretna, Carlisle and then ultimately to Penrith so uh, catch you shortly, cheers! So, um, a little bit of time has passed since I cycled to Penrith to pick up the, the van. The reason why I didn't film any more is because I was actually going really well and doing a good time. So I wanted just to press on and not be faffing around with the camera. So that's the van picked up, driven back. I'm all freshened up now. And um, yeah, it's good. So it's Peugeot Boxer L3H2. So plenty of space and now we're going to let the conversion start. So it needs to get a couple of things done, uh, nothing major, just a couple of checks I want to do on it. Everything's absolutely fine though and uh, yeah, we need to crack on. So the first step will be it needs cleaned internally because it's been a builder's van. It is absolutely filthy inside so it needs to be dusted and need to get these holes done filled up with rust prevention bulkhead will come out and then need to get the sound deadening done so and get these lights taken out so we'll get a full strip down clean uh, and the paint internally will all be tidied up and sprayed so we're going to start that process today but the main one will be to remove all the ply first of all get in behind the ply and get this whole thing cleaned and washed internally uh, and then once that's completed bulkhead out cleaned and washed and uh, yeah be good to go okay so one of the reasons why i've picked the Peugeot boxer van is exactly for this so i am five foot nine or just slightly over five foot nine and uh width weighs I can be fully stretched out which is absolutely fantastic because that saves a phenomenal amount of space 
So rather than having the bed, which would be a full double bed, lengthways out to here and taking up a lot of space, it means I can have it widthways and save an absolute ton of space, which means the bed essentially can just come to here and then that leaves so much more room. But what I'm hoping to have at least within the next five days is the van fully cleaned, um, ply lining removed, sound deadening on and start some of the insulation. It will then need to go to a company. I'm hoping it's the Tartan camper van and camper van conversion company where they will cut a hole in here and insert a roof fan and also solar panels and then wire down everything else I should be able to do myself but I just don't want to be cut in a hole in my own van um, because that might not end well All right. so uh, we're going to jump to the garage so a couple of things which I already have for the van is toilet so it's not going to be a built in toilet this is absolutely fantastic toilet so got it on Amazon really good completely sealed no smell gets out of this it's been used already it's obviously clean but it has been used in the past and you can activate this this part comes off and you can flush it through with a hose pipe it's completely clean you don't need to get anything on your hands at all i love how this works and zero no smell comes out of it at all when it's been used so it's really really good um so this will be going into like a cupboard area within the van uh, and that's how the toilet will work have a flat screen LCD television with built in DVD player and there's a dongle to allow Google Play etc so you can stream from your phone and use the phone Wi-Fi and have like Freeview, uh, Netflix, all that kind of stuff uh, today we've got stuff in charge here, today I did need to get some drill bits, some metal drill bits for drilling the metal had to buy this because internally there is a little bit of corrosion internally so this will clean it up I'll then use white Hammerite metal paint as a primer base layer and then the Peugeot colours so we'll get all the inside tidied up so uh, time to crack on and get this thing clean because it is filthy in the back Morning and welcome back so we are now on our way to Wix for episode 2 of the van build so I need to get some ply lining uh, foil bubble wrap insulation and I'll explain why just shortly um, we're going to be using this over other products available on the van build market uh, so see you in Wix okay so that was a bit of a mission picked up ply insulation foil tape uh, wooden battens and that's 350 pounds already but overall still going to be cheaper than buying a camper van and it's going to be custom to my specification so let's get back have a look at everything and uh, start to get this going. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. Cheers. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got 12 mil thick sheet supply lining, which will replace this stuff here. We've got 9 mil which will go into the sides. Now we've got all these, which will be the wooden battens. So this plywood will come off. The wooden battens will go in to give us a firm, rigid structure that will go into. This, I don't know if you can see the drawings, this will be cut out. Height, top height of the bed will be here. We'll have a small cubicle there for the toilet. Um, seats over there, wardrobe, kitchen. So yeah, all going to be good. Thermal bubble wrap insulation, so a bit of controversy here. So there's a, a very good company called Dodo that make uh, sound deadening mats, thermal insulation, etc. And their products are brilliant, not questioning that. But if you're on a budget, they can amount up to be quite expensive. So their thermal insulation and sound deadening which they use. So sound deadening is basically so that, these panels rattle when you're driving and the sound deadening takes away that rattle when you're driving and goes to like a, a low thud clunk. Um, the dodo mats or the mats, they're, they've got like a heavy rubberized back. You peel off the sticky um, surface and then just stick them on and that stops and deadens the sound ultimately. Now this stuff isn't sticky but 
basically what's giving you the sound deadening is the weight and the distributed weight across the panel that stops it rattling. So this stuff will ultimately do the same and it'll act as thermal insulation as well. So this will actually be sprayed, cut into sections and sprayed and stuck to the panels. I'll then use the, I haven't actually purchased it yet because there's no point just now because it, it, it's going to be much later in the build process stage. So it will be, it looks like loft insulation but it doesn't have any toxic fibrous material it's made from recycled uh, plastic bottles actually um so there's no risk you don't need to wear a mask when using it and that will go on top of the thermal bubble wrap um then the ply lining will go on top of that and then it'll be cladded painted and it'll look absolutely beautiful so we'll get this stuff out the van so i can start to access the areas and carry on working so Let's crack on. Okay, so as ever, things that you think are straightforward aren't quite so straightforward. So I've got nearly all the ply lining out, just this panel left to do, and look at the crap, the dust, the debris underneath from the last uh, four years worth of uh, building juice. So, yeah. This one, we've got some stubborn screws as ever. Got a little bit of damage, so... All this will need to be cleaned as I've already mentioned. Uh, then some rust treatment on where the holes have went through the underside, which is normal in vans. But we'll get rust treatment on that. Wash everything down, obviously, as I've said. And uh, we'll then get everything sprayed so it looks nice, new, uh, or as good as new. So, yeah, good. So, a bit more progress today. But... Uh, Days are ticking on, back at work tomorrow, uh, back into training as well, obviously. Um, just trying to mix everything round does uh, cause some restrictions on time, but we'll get it done, we'll get it done. Okay, so we now have the complete inside of the van cleaned so it's all cleaned and I've treated the floor with rust prevention so everything's been ground back where there'd been previous screw holes that had corroded and I've completely treated the whole entire floor and some of the stanchion areas for rust prevention so we're looking pretty good now I just need to do another coat of rust prevention treatment and paint on the back sill here and just along the front guide step um, we will remove the bulkhead now unfortunately it's raining a bit today the weather is supposed to clear up it's quite cold just now so I can't do any more painting just now but I will get some of these holes filled in and then go over the top of them with a rust prevention hard coat paint as I've said get the bulkhead out clean up that area uh, and then hopefully I can start to then look at laying the battens for the floor. Okay, so that is all the holes in the base where the plywood was put down, filled. Doors cleaned up. Van is absolutely spotless now. Now what we're going to do is inject silicon into here and the reason behind that is because some of the seals have split so if we inject silicon in to where the seals are for the panels it basically means um, we won't get the rattles and then I'll put the sound deadening on which will just strengthen it up and uh, eliminate any vibration and echoes so that's the bulkhead out everything prepped Now we can start putting down the wooden battens and preparing the floor insulation and wall insulation. For the flooring of the camper van, we have been cutting these wooden battens here into lengths and then putting them down on the floor where the original plywood's been removed and we've actually been gluing them into place with this. So this has actually been £120 worth of uh, no more nails new bond for heavy objects and we'll just show 
So this is how we're looking. So this is absolutely solid. So what will happen is insulation, sound deadening will go down and then insulation between the slats. Then the new ply lining, which I need to cut from the template of the old one, but without the holes for the original hooks, etc. That'll go down. Once that's down, I'll be able to then do the dodo sound deadening mats on the wall, just to take out the vibration and deaden the sound. And then I'll start putting on the strapping to be able to then put the walls on and mount them into place. So progress is being made, but this has been an exceptionally time consuming job. I've forgotten actually how long it took to do this after doing the last build in the Ford Transit Custom. So we now have the floor ready to get the ply lining down on. As you can see, we have the insulation, foil bubble wrap. Now we're going to stuff this with some of the recycled bottle insulation which I've now purchased. So that's the stuff here. So great stuff and now we just need to cut the panels to get down into the floor of the van. So we'll get the floor laid and then we'll start putting the foil bubble wrap on the side walls, the ceiling. I'll then start to route the cables where the cables will go and then it will be a case of installing the plastic you know, the recycled plastic, uh, bottle plastic insulation onto the walls and then start to panel out the actual walls of the van as well. I need to try and remove this here, this old silicon. I need to try and find a way to get that off without damaging the paint. Okay, so that's the floor laid, all good to go. I just need to screw it down. So we'll get it all screwed down and then I'll seal round uh, the gaps and then use expanding foam just in the corners. And then we'll carry on with the rest of the insulation, the foil wrap around the uh, inside the interior of the van. So yeah, coming together, but I've noticed it's the, these jobs although it doesn't look like a lot's been done they're super time consuming very finicky to do yeah a challenge but it's going to be good and it's going to be worth it when it's done so a top tip for van builds is always allow yourself plenty of time and try not to do too much and i'm being completely hypocritical here because although this doesn't look like a lot's been done 
but it's been over probably three weeks only when I have available time because I work full time I have a family um, I'm a middle-aged athlete cyclist and trying to still be competitive so I need to train and currently my what they call a CTL level which means chronic training load is quite reduced just now because I'm trying to juggle and do absolutely everything which is not ideal it's possible but it's just not ideal um, last time I had a down day or a recovery day properly was probably 2018 but um, yeah so always give yourself enough time to get everything done I am kind of fighting time just now it's supposed to rain today I've got a three hour training session to do normally I would do the training in the morning and then just embrace the fatigue later on in the day but I'm gonna have to do it the opposite way around because the weather's supposed to get quite nasty later today so I'm gonna carry on with the van build just now and then when the bad weather starts to come in I'll then go and do three hour training session on Zwift it's just an endurance training session this film isn't about training it's about van building but it's just a just want to demonstrate how you need to kind of mix everything and allow time frames right okay so we've managed to start doing the battens for the walls of the van which will allow me to fix the actual main walls and implement the cladding and build the units uh, as part of the internal structure I will insulate in behind so I'll just show you what that's going to look like so we've got we're starting to put the battens down all the insulation will go in behind here just before I put the insulation in I'll run all the cables through and down to where I think all the fixing points I want to be here so this section here is going to be a bit of a faff and along with this section here because I've not made it quite so easy so I need to box that off but I still want to have this area open kitchen's going to be here wardrobe here king size bed be about up at this height here so I can get the bikes in underneath there'll be a little cupboard with the portable toilet here there'll be a box seat here which I can lift up and it'll have the heating system in underneath so once I've got the batten secure I'm gonna tape out the floor and mark it out as per my crude drawing plan here so 183 centimeters long for the bed, 160 centimeters wide. Bumblebee, my awesome smart car, which is souped up, so it's very fast. Anyway, so I have the old ply line in from the van, and this is the height where the bed's going to be. So I just need to measure this. This will be the bench seat, so this will be the side of the wall. So we'll get that organised and uh, we'll crack on with the rest of the build and I'll bring you more progress updates. Okay, so finally we are making progress with the insulation. So these have just been cut and placed in situ and they will now be glued in place. And then we'll run the cables. Just stick these final pieces as I've mentioned. Run the cables in and then put the recycled uh, plastic bottle insulation on top of this when the cable's in and then start to panel up so uh, looking good
All right, so real big progress now. We have the insulation in. I don't know if you can notice that, but the acoustics have completely altered. Um, real good sound deadening, which is fantastic. This is going to have a lot of good thermal properties and keeping the place well insulated. Nice and warm in the winter and uh, not overly hot in the summer, hopefully. So uh, the fan will go in. You may think, well, why have you done that first? But the uh, people that are going to install the fan for me, because I'm not cutting a hole in my own van, that's just something I'm not going to do. They've told me it doesn't matter, I can put the ceiling on, not an issue, they'll cut through, install the fan, seal it, tidy it up, job's a good one. I've run all the wires and the cables, but as ever there's always a little problem, so I was so enthusiastic to do that, I have actually forgotten to label what each of the cables are for. Um, but it's not a big issue because I've already done like a pool test, I can feel where they're going and running to, so I'll label them up before I completely forget. So really happy with the progress so far because you know I haven't had that you know large number of man hours available with working, training, family so um, I've just been cracking on when we can. So I'm going to put a few more battens in place and then start to measure up the ply lining which will then panel everything off, cover it so it means we're going to have a skin then I will mark out where the kitchen wardrobes toilet etc are all gonna go and uh yeah that's it Okay, so that is the ceiling fully installed and uh, completed and we have painted it as well. So there will be a hole cut here for the roof fan and there will also be oak stain battens that will go into place um, to actually separate the white and to break up the colours and just to have that look nice finishing technique. So ceiling, roof almost complete okay so before we get into this film um yes this is episode four of the van build series you haven't accidentally clicked on something else or any form of spam however this film what starts out as being the van build episode four series transpires into some fun eccentrics so little issue in terms of the build process meaning i shot away ahead and cracked on with the build and forgot to film at the same time because it's difficult doing both and trying to concentrate especially when you're under quite tight time restrictions and i have lost quite a lot of time um i've got lots of different things going on in the background lots of projects i'm trying to prepare and train ready to go to portugal which is in two weeks time for a cycling adventure so you'll see that coming up holiday, family and cycling adventure, big training camp and then lots of beach activity in the afternoon. So anyway, what you'll see at the start of this van build process is just snapshots of the progress which has went from having the ceiling installed, um, ceiling painted, the rest of the insulation completed, the started doing the wooden cladding, laying the floor, the line of floor and then just progressing ultimately now to I no longer have the van at my house at this moment in time it's now been taken to the Tartan Camper Van Company which was today um, so I'm kind of back and forward in terms of time frames just now so it was taken there today and now it's going to have the side window and the sliding door it's going to have the diesel heater 
it's going to have the solar panel, it's going to have the roof fan, it's going to have the electrics done. So we're kind of working on it together. Um, They're going to support cutting holes in the van because I just do not want to do that at all. They're also going to help source and supply a good water pump for the water system and also a shower head tap as well along with my LED strip lights and my touch panel um, recessed LED lights in the ceiling. So lots of good stuff coming up. I didn't film being at the Tartan Van Company today because it's over 60 miles from my house and I have to cycle back on this. So you will see that cycling footage which ended up being a number of funny shenanigans. So basically I've never been or never cycled in that area at all. Didn't know how to get back home. So I used Google Maps and it took me on, shall we say, a little bit of an adventure. So check out episode four and I'll see you at the finish. So, I am somewhere, I haven't got a clue where, never been here before, uh, on the bike anyway. So I've just dropped the van off at the Tartan Van Camper Van Company outside of Kilmarnock. A um, few miles outside of Kilmarnock. So it's going to now get its electric, solar, roof fan, diesel heater installed. It is a stunning day, which makes a change because we haven't had good weather for the last few weeks in Scotland. Um, weather stunning today. Absolutely beautiful as I now prepare and get my body ready to go to Portugal for a two week of intense training to get back my fitness levels, which have deteriorated somewhat due to a number of reasons but we'll get that back and we'll get it sorted I want to be I don't want to be fighting every day on the bike I'm in Portugal so I've got a big two week block now to get some consistency because I've had zero consistency and as every cycling coach will tell you you need consistency so it's been very sporadic bike riding I'm not unfit but I'm not speedy fit so we'll get that back so today I'll get like three hours or more just spinning the legs. Um, good excuse leaving the van and then having to cycle home. I'm using Google Maps and it's taken me all over the place. It's taken me into housing schemes with dead ends so it doesn't have a clue where it's going. Now we're on gravel, so gravel ride now. Hey, gravel ride. I do have a road bike and I'm on gravel. So, hey. Right, so I'm going to crack on before I crash. Okay, Google. Google, you are not supposed to do this with a road bike. This is where Google's taken me to get home. I typed in, I keyed in cycling so it would avoid the motorways and this is where we're going. Let's go off road. I've just picked up the vehicle from Tartan Camper Vans because they've helped support uh, me with some of the aspects of the build which I reckon I could do but I just didn't have the luxury of making a mistake in terms of time frames, finances etc because it would have been costly if I'd made a mistake. So you find me back in and I'll show you what we've done. So we have full electrical system installed. 200 watt solar panel on the roof. We have split relay charging kit. We have 12 volt sockets 
we have water pump and we have diesel heater we have roof fan we have touch leds sensitive leds so all good stuff so let's get over here so we can turn on the system so the system is now on and live now what this allows me to do here is l for leisure battery v for vehicle battery very easy straightforward so in case of an emergency i can divert to the vehicle battery or to we always want to keep on leisure battery but just in case of emergency vehicle battery this activates the tap the pump the tap and over here we have our switch so that's our pump which will go into the sink because the sink will be here kitchen unit etc will all be in this area that turns off our pump our water pump very easy very straightforward now here we go for our lights check that out beautiful beautiful led lighting absolutely love that very nice glow makes it really good really good And here, watch, we have touch, touch sensitive. I absolutely love that. That is just a great piece of tech. And here we have the roof fan. Now this is a very clever system. So basically you can set the temperature. So if it gets too cold, roof fan closes, deactivates. If it gets too hot, the roof fan opens and reactivates. Here we have our 220 amp battery. Here we have our solar system, which this mounted to the solar unit, our charge controller, our power supply unit here. Trip switches. We can plug in USBs here, but no need to. I, I can plug in an inverter, but I'll do that later on when I decide what type of inverter. But to be brutally honest, I don't really need to do it just now. And here we have our diesel heater, which is an autotherm air. Now this is plumbed into the actual vehicle diesel tank, which means, you know, it's all good and we've got no issues at all having to faff around with diesel tank etc etc and we can just turn the system on so it'll be mounted like this again once i mount it on So absolutely fantastic system. Love that. Okay, so next stage of the build is finishing touches. Need to clad into here, finish this cladding. But again, I can't do that. So we've got the trim level done here now, which you did not see on the last film. All trimmed nicely inside of here and looking really good. We just need to finish down here, finish down this side. Once that's finished, I can then finish off the battens. Then I'll build the bed frame, the panels, because then the 12 volts will go into the panels on the side of the bed. There'll be the bench seat here with the toilet inside. There'll be another bench seat here and that will convert into a bed, table, kitchen and wardrobe. So I'm gonna crack on with more of the build. Okay, so we need to get this panel here done and covered. So we've made the template, used a piece of card, made the template, and now we've cut out that piece and we just need to cover it in material and do the same for this side and this side. And then that means we can start to clad this wall here to complete that.
Okay, so as you can see, we've got a lot of progress done, so we've actually decided to paint the cladding. Cladding of the vehicle is fully finished, and we're now doing the door covers, which will be carpeted. So you can see the progress that we've been making. Now once the door panels have been completed, it will be a case of then starting to build the bed frame and then build the units and get everything painted up, cupboard doors on etc. And then sort the kitchen and the plumbing system out. So good progress so far. Okay, so that's the door template cut for the open and closing side. So get this carpeted and then get it fixed into place. Now I'm hoping I can refit this. It should be quite easy, but there's not much cable to pull through. So it effectively fastens the same way as an old school and old style uh, bike braking system fits um, from like the BMXs in the 1980s. So I should be used to that without a problem as long as I can pull enough cable through. So. Let's get this carpeted and get all the panels fixed on. Okay, so let's get the carpeted panels onto the sliding door. And while the other panel is being carpeted, then we'll get everything fixed into place and we're good to go. Good morning. So next day today, again the days just merge into each other when you're doing a van build but obviously we're still working and I have a training session, a very hard interval training session where it's a 10 minute warm up, 25 minutes uh, zone 4, 5 minute cool down, 25 minutes zone 4 again. So that's later today but what we're doing just now is we're building the bed frame. So these are the cross struts which will go down the middle. We need to build the frame to get all this boxed in and then paint the frame. People may be asking why you bother bothering painting the frame when you're not really going to see it, but it's attention to detail and my OCD will just not allow me to have that bare pine without the paint on it. So we will get this sorted out and we'll get cracking on with the build and show you the progress. Okay, so that is the bed frame in. So now we just need to make the front panels, get in a nice design cut out for the top, which will hold the mattress in, because the mattress will actually come up to round about this height here. So this will all be nice curved flush. Same at this side here, but I'll have archways for the gaps cut out where the bike will slide in here. So the bike frame will sit in a slide, as I've already mentioned. Wheels beside it will slide in and out in a drawer. This side can be for storage or an additional bike, depending on the requirements. And then I need to crack on with getting the kitchen built, wardrobe, couch, bench seat, and then I need to mount the charging system, uh, power plug sockets into here for charging devices or running the television. So bed frame in and solid.
Okay, so we have jumped ahead a little bit in terms of the build progress, so apologies for that, but here we go. So, as you can see, we're pretty much cracked on. Bed frame has been completed. I just need to get the spars on, mattress cut to shape. We've got the toilet cubicle finished. The lid is just having the foam put on and then a nice cover. And then this just opens up like so. And it can pull out and then you can do your business but that's for an emergency only we have the door panels on and covered we started to do the kitchen units started to make cabinets this will actually go lengthways down here across this section and now i am just currently making the template to block out this so this is a cardboard template i'll put that onto the plywood draw around it cut it out job's a good one and uh, we'll crack on so I'll get this wardrobe done. Want to get the wardrobe panels done in place and the panels painted before I then start to do the sink. Okay, so we'll catch up shortly. Creating the wardrobe that will fit in beside the kitchen. We have. The front panel done already okay so progress in the wardrobe a little bit of mess but it's always the always the way with these things so we've just finished making the template because of the curve because I wanted to fit as tight and exact as possible but because everything's kind of wood you do have to allow for expansion and contraction etc so we will just show you where we're at so this is a template so i'm just smoothing off the edges and hopefully hopefully this will work and then we'll get this cut out and uh, hopefully it'll fit okay so had to take out the kitchen to build the wardrobe in i've just Put this frame here this isn't naturally going here this will go lengthways i've just put this frame here just now just to be able to prop this up so i can see where it'll go in conjunction with the cupboard door okay so progress update there has been a slight time lapse um as you can see from the hair i haven't had a haircut for about four weeks and it's chaos so as you can see now we're really cracking on get the light on we're starting to build the unit we've i've cut the hole this will be repainted it just had an undercoat so we've got the heating system obviously Remove the control panel. I'm still trying to decide where to put the control panel for the heater. We've got the mattress on, bed struts in. So let's just have an overview of where we are. So kitchen units still to go in. They were in temporarily. I took them back out again because it was just to size up where the wardrobe would go. So the top of this... I've made the top already and that's being covered to look like this so really really impressed with how this is looking and uh might not be to everybody's taste but everybody has different requirements and that's why if you're able to do a camper van conversion you don't need to be an expert youtube sorry got pencil behind me here youtube is fantastic for learning trial and error Try not to waste too much money, but ultimately this is a 2018 Peugeot Boxer L3H2 and to get the camper van equivalent of this with the heating system, shower tap etc which I'll have, you, you're looking for this age of vehicle at round about 40 to 50 thousand pounds. At the end of this build series and um, once the van's complete I'll go through the costings but you know I'll at least be less than half of that which includes the purchase of the vehicle and getting everything done yes I don't have a shower but I do have a toilet I will have a shower tap here where you can have a shower outside or wash your hair in the sink etc 
and this is built to my own specification that suits myself and my family for our outdoor activities the cycling and just generally the setup you buy a camper van off the shelf none of them are actually to my requirement they're a crazy amount of money as well so uh yeah it's worthwhile to do it yourself and you can get it exactly to your requirements so i'll crack on we're getting this done and we'll bring you a further update okay so that is me got the heating system rewired back in again so this is actually an autotherm air 2d heater and it's made in russia and the russian military use it and apparently it's made by russian rocket scientists so should be pretty good it's not cheap a lot of people use the cheap diesel heaters um i just don't want to take the risk so we've got this bad boy now i'm going to put my front fascia plate on implement all the hoses etc and uh start it up and i'm hoping that it's going to work so let's crack on okay so i don't know if you can hear that but the heating system is on i can hear it pumping or at least doing something but there's power to it which is fantastic sounds like it's cranking up there is air coming through oh heating up now And we've got warm air. Oh, I'm excited. I'm super excited. It's 10 o'clock at night and I'm messing around with diesel heater. So that's a full on success. Diesel heating system working. So now I can get the panels and get everything on. Now this does a rundown process. So top tip, you never shut down your power to the heating system to turn it off. You activate the panel to turn it off and it has to do a rundown cycle to purge the diesel out the pipeline system. So it's like a safe mode. Um, so never completely cut off and eliminate the power. Allow it to do its rundown cycle. Right, it's kicking in now. Oh, I'm super excited. Heating. That's great. Right, catch up shortly. Okay, so we have a couple of issues regarding the install of the tap here. So basically, the sinkhole was not large enough to then accommodate for these. So it's been in and out a couple of times, and it's been a bit of a faff, to be honest. So I've had to drill in side holes to expand out, which uh, was slightly annoying, but um, done now, so let's get it installed. Thank you. 